Education. In Italy, we have that the idea is that in the north they have better schools than in the south, and studies have shown that this is true. Um, there's this one study that really looks at all of the school systems in the, the developed nations, and they said that they had to split Italy in half because on the in the north and center you have some of the most amazing schools that are on par or better than the average, and then in the south you have schools that are on par with like the third world. The statistics said this, not me. And that's just the general fact that it is accepted in Italy. But even despite that, if you look at all the universities, if you look at my university, Bocconi, which is supposed to be like the best for economics, m many of my classmates are from the South. I would say if not half more of my classmates are from the South. A lot of the great Italian scientists, doctors, a lot of famous Italians in the world were from the South. Some of the smartest people I know are from the South. They are competing with people from the North and people from abroad and we're all taking the same exams, but a lot of people from the South get good grades. I don't know, despite the education system and the stereotype that people from the South are less educated, I feel like, um, I don't know, the facts and the representations in the universities kind of conflict that study. Probably it's less that people from the South have worse schools because there is a national ministry that sets standards for education in Italy and I'm pretty sure the standards are the same. Probably it's just that southern schools are underfunded, which shouldn't happen anymore. They passed some laws that said the North and the South should have equal funding, but budgeting problems, efficiency problems, all of this can contribute into things not working the way that they should work. Still see the disparities in the South and the Southern education system in Italy, but I wouldn't discount it. The thing is that the South is poorer than the North in America, just as it is in Italy. There's a pretty big economic gap, and while it has been closing, it is still pretty big, and there are major differences between the education system in the North and the education system in the South. Unlike Italy, we don't have like a national, we have a national ministry for education but really education is regulated by the states where we have one standard in Connecticut Texas will have completely different standards of what they need to learn how history needs to be taught you guys they had this huge story they were in Texas they were learning a completely different version of history than we were learning that's not something that should be happening um, while editing this video I realized that I didn't really make my point clear enough on how effed up that situation is. The Board of Education in Texas basically approved a syllabus that would downplay the South's role in slavery, saying that slavery wasn't so bad and some blacks actually liked it. They wanted to put less emphasis on Jim Crow laws and put very blatantly that the Civil War was not fought to end slavery. It's true that slavery wasn't the only cause of the Civil War, but when you're teaching it as if it was just an afterthought, people in the South are gonna think that that's not something that was worth fighting for. They're gonna think that that wasn't something that was bad enough to rip our country apart. Not saying that things are much better in the North where we pretty much just skim on through the Civil War, skip over the Reconstruction area, don't talk about the effects that going abroad and fighting in World War II had on black soldiers who would come back and start the seeds of the Civil Rights Movement. We kind of downplay all of that, skip straight to the Civil Rights Movement where, you know, Martin Luther King let every black and white person in America sit down and sing kumbaya together. Everything was great and the end. Not a great way to talk about the truths and the brutality of our history, but at least it's written in the books. Even if we don't talk about it, there is this silent acknowledgement in the North that that time in our history was very, very bad. I think the problem is that a lot of people don't learn about the Civil War. They don't learn about its aftermath. They don't learn these truths. They don't know why America is so racist. They don't know that, yeah, after the Civil War, slavery was abolished, but due to a thing called the Great Compromise, Reconstruction was pretty much stopped in its South. It was taken over by the KKK, and a lot of the improvements that were fought for and won in the Civil War went backwards. Instead of slavery, you just had sharecropping. The position of black people in the South immediately after the Civil War wasn't that much better than it was before. Then you go to World War II where a lot of black soldiers fought in Europe alongside white soldiers. White soldiers that weren't looking at them as Negro slaves but were looking at them as American soldiers. They got a hero's welcome when they liberated all of these cities just to come back to America where some of them couldn't even vote. How am I gonna fight and put my life on the line for this country and not even be able to vote? So they start the Civil Rights Movement which 
was violent. There were very many white people in America that thought it was violent. They thought that Martin Luther King and his followers were extremists. And in the end, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, the great leaders of the civil rights movement were all assassinated. Many of them were assassinated. Immediately after the civil rights movement, there were riots, people were poor, people had to go to Vietnam to fight, and that the situation was so bad that you had the rise of Black Panthers. You had the part of the rise of a more extreme view of Black nationalism. Do you think that would have happened if the civil rights ended on a happy note? The government is able to stop the Black Panthers somewhere around the 80s, but as we see from the race riots of the late 80s and early 90s, the Rodney King incident, things, people were still pissed. There were still divisions. Even today, we have voter laws that are passing in the South that look to disenfranchise poor people. And who are usually the poor people in the South if they're not the minorities? In 2016, we're still talking about voting rights equality. We're still talking about police brutality against black people. We're still talking about economic disenfranchisement. And if we learned history correctly, we wouldn't all act so damn clueless about the issues. And sorry if I went on a tangent, but I just felt like it would have been irresponsible if I didn't just take three minutes to point that out. The best universities in America are in the North. All the Ivies are in the Northeast. They do have some really good universities in the South as well, but Harvard, Columbia, Samford, they're all in the Northeast or California. I don't, I never went to school in the South to know, for real, in America, but I would say that if creationism is being taught in one place and the Confederates won the Civil War in another place, I, I, I what can I say? Crime. In North and South of Italy, there's a disparity in crime. The stereotype is that there's more crime in the South than in the North, largely due to the Mafia and just the closeness. I mean, the South of Italy is really close to, you know, the Middle East, Africa. There's a lot of human smuggling, a lot of illegal immigration, a lot of drugs trafficking, human trafficking. Just because of location, I think it's pretty obvious that that would be like that. And then the Mafia has this hold on everything, like, if you look up the history of the Mafia in Italy, it'll just kind of make you shake your head. I really don't, I don't know what to say about it. I can't say that just because Milan is in the north that it's a crime-free city. I told you guys, I've been robbed twice. Um, just the other day, a guy got mad that his wife was leaving him and decided to blow up their apartment, okay, with the wife and the two daughters in there. Luckily, the two daughters survived, but I think the wife died and two neighbors died. He just he blew it up. This guy got mad and they were Italian. Uh, I think that stereotype is kind of true that in the South crime is more prevalent because of location. In, in America, for example, there's no stereotype that like, for example, the South has more crime than the North. For us, there's more like cities, New York, LA, Detroit, Chicago. Everywhere else, it's kind of like sporadic. I mean, we have a very, as you've seen, powerful police force, I guess, has a handle on crime. Crime in America has gone down. It was a lot worse than it is now. Crime is still pretty high, but when somebody says there's more violent deaths in America than anywhere else in the world, I think that that's city data. Just the killings that happen in Chicago alone, they kill like a person every hour over there, of course, that that's gonna skew the data, but I don't think in general, in America, you're any, you're any more unsafe than, you know, anywhere else. It just depends on if you're living in a big city and specific big cities because just walking down the streets of Manhattan isn't going to get you shot either but I don't know certain ports, parts of Chicago certain parts of Detroit maybe I think crime maybe per capita the numbers will show that America has more crime than Italy but I think the reality of it is 90% of America isn't as crime laden as people would think. As I've said before, I feel I feel pretty safe here. Aside from like America specific things like I don't know, like police brutality, maybe getting shot. But those things are just maybe getting shot honestly is it honestly weighs on my conscience the same amount as a terrorist attack happening in Europe. It happens sometimes. I hope it doesn't happen to me, but that's just the way it is, you know? People people can throw numbers at me all they want. People can throw numbers at me all they want. But, okay, we can say that in America, the North 
has more crime than the South because it's more industrialized, maybe because there's more cities in the North. And then in Italy, the South has more crime because of like the mafia. But as a whole, while the numbers show that there are more homicides, etc., in um, America, I can't say to somebody, don't come to America because it's not safe. If you're smart and you're aware of your surroundings and no, and you're aware of your surroundings, I really don't think anything is gonna happen to you outside of like a freak incident, you know? And I think that's the exact same when you go to Italy. Nothing's really gonna happen to you outside of a freak incident. I guess that's the perks of living in the first world country. I don't know. Okay, I've got two things, two cultural things, food and style. In Italy, I don't think that there's a north-south, we do better food. I think that every region in Italy has their own cuisine and it's all like other regions respect other regions' re um, cuisine. I don't think anybody thinks, oh, I'm from Lombardy and so my food is better than yours. I think that Italians, no one recognize that Food is an Italian thing and they have awesome cuisine. In the North and South of America, I think that the South is more known for their cuisine. It's more authentic, it's more American. The things that they eat are things that were like cooked up by the slaves and so they were invented here in America, you know? They're known for that and I had some peach cobbler last night and it was amazing. I'll give the South that. They do have awesome cooking. If we're comparing America and Italy though, I gotta say I like Italian food. Yeah. You guys, I lost 10 pounds in Italy just from eating their food. I found that out when I came here. I went to the doctor and I lost 10 pounds. I don't exercise in Italy. I mean, aside from walking to and from work and school, I don't really do much there and I lost 10 pounds. Just let that sink in. The last thing is style and fashion. In Italy, they say that people in the north, specifically Milan, dress better than people in the south. I think as a whole, Italians dress better than Americans. In America, it's more of a city versus rural thing. In America, we say that people from New York and LA dress better. For sure, in my opinion, people in New York dress better than people in LA. <laughs> um, but you'd be surprised. Things that people in Italy would call tamaro or tamarra is high fashion in America. There's your north-south divide. Oh, in the north it's like this, in the south it's like this. I'm aware, but just for sake of just for sake of everything, recognize that as much as Italians don't want to admit it, Italy is a country, okay? And you guys have developed over the years a national like identity and a national culture. And maybe you guys can't see it, but to an outsider, I see it. And yes, I get that there are regional disparities, but trust me, it's still quite accurate to say that Italy is something and America is another. One difference that I have to say though, is that North Italians and South Italians do have more of like a mutual respect though. I feel like nor people from the North acknowledge the fact that maybe the South is prettier, the South is more laid back, life is nicer in the South. Like you can't argue that the beaches in the South are the most beautiful beaches in Italy, you know? And people from the North respect that about people from the South. And people from the South of Italy respect that it, in the North they have great industry, they're really efficient, they know how to make things work. And I feel like people from the South respect that of people up the no from the North. And there's a lot of like intermingling. People from the North go to the South to go on vacation. People from the South go to the North to work. There's a lot of intermingling. Whereas in this, the States, I feel like we're much more isolated in our communities. Um, it's not uncommon to hear somebody from the North say they have no interest of going to the South ever. I would like, I would like to go. That's why I booked this flight to Texas, because I want to see what it's like. I don't want to talk about something that I haven't experienced, you know? I am completely open to other cultures and seeing other perspectives. But a lot of people from the North don't want to go to the south and i wouldn't be surprised if it's the same in the south i wouldn't be surprised if like the unsaid animosity goes to both ways because i've never met somebody from the south in all of my in all of my life i've never met a person living in the north that was from the south and i've been all over the north i have family in jersey i have family in connecticut i have family in maine i have family in new york of all the people that i've encountered in my whole life i've never encountered somebody from the south that lives in the north or moved to the north so i just feel like we're very isolated the people still say things like the south will rise again the confederate flag still flies all over the place and i mean Racism aside, let's not talk about race, but the Confederate flag stands for the Confederate Army, the, the army that wanted to break apart and make their own nation 
in the United States. So I don't know, I feel like the same things like the South will rise again and flying that flag, flag, which is a separatist flag, just damages our national unity anyways, but to each their own. Ironically, it's in America, it's southern states wanted to secede and in Italy, it's the north that wants to secede. Oddly enough, I think a lot of these um, differences were just born out of economic economic disparities because of these economic gaps i feel like that's where you kind of get a lot of these differences it's and, it, and it's everywhere there are these differences everywhere in many countries and it's always seems to be said that the ones that are more industrial and city-like are mean and cold and the ones that are the farmer and the rurals are the ones with like the best food and they're just so nice and hospitable it's i don't know it's it's interesting to me that's all i can really say with certainty is that it's interesting um i hope that you guys like this video i hope that it was interesting to you it was interesting to me um comment down below like and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys in my